So the SEC, the Alphabet Boys, they are suing Binance and the founder CZ, this man right here. Now, Binance is one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world. So generally, people are seeing this as bad news in the crypto space. Why is that important? Because if they own or are part of 80% of the entire crypto world, and then they're saying that the leader of it is a fraud and he might just disappear, this would be like a Sam Bankman-Fried FTX situation times two family will be double. So this is what's going on and why the crypto world is currently shaking up. That's what we're going to talk about today. I want you to hit the like, hit the subscribe, and let's get right into it. But hold up. <laughs> the SEC, the Alphabet Boys, remember FINRA, when you hear that name, these are the police of the stock market. But the SEC, oh, this is the FBI of the stock market. And they're not just suing Binance. They're suing Coinbase. Take a look at this. It says right here that the SEC sues Coinbase. And Coinbase is basically the largest United States because, remember, Binance is outside of the United States mostly. But Coinbase is one of the largest exchanges for the United States, if not the largest. And they're getting sued, too, for securities violations and fraud family it looks like the government got something up their sleeve which i'll show you at the end of the video because listen we heard this song before we've been through this song and dance so we got to learn how can we use it to potentially make some money now i'm not telling you to buy hold or sell anything i'm here to give you the facts and you be the judge but take a look at this statement this is from the chair gary gensler and he says that we allege that coinbase despite being subject to securities laws co-mingled and unlawful offered exchange and broker dealer and clearinghouse functions in other parts of our securities markets these functions are separate they're saying that long story short they're operating like a weeble they're operating like a robin hood like a fidelity but they didn't put in the proper paperwork which makes them a fraud doing something illegal so there's reason for this that we want to keep our eyes on but this episode is brought to you by KG's University, aka the Discord, and I wanted to show you a few things before we get into the rest of it. So you remember how NVIDIA ran up 30% basically in a week, and a lot of people got in on the run, and they were pumped. Well, there are other stocks that are hot too. Like, for example, Palantir, up 72% in the last year. But you're thinking to yourself, man, I keep missing out on stocks going up 30%, stocks going up 70%. Well, you know what I do? I tell myself I can't catch them all. But I learn how to play stock options where I buy contracts and then I like to watch them run up. For example, today on the live stream, I got in an option. And when I got off of the live stream, I held on to the option still. And family, this thing went up 77%. We were over on a discord talking about it. You can go and join the discord. And I want to give everybody a major salute. We had so many members join in the last few days that I just got to salute everybody for joining KG's University, where you learn how to trade stocks, we learn how to trade options, you learn how to read the charts, you learn how to stack your cash up appropriately, and how to understand dividends and passive income all in one spot for the best prices. The $20 slot completely sold out, family. So I appreciate y'all for that. And you can come on down and join. The $10 spots is open. I see you over there. But let's take a look at this. Coinbase, baby, we got to talk about it. It says that it's down 9% in after hours. It says that it's down 20% in the last year. But I got to say this, have no fear. Put options is here. What does that mean? That means that there's somebody right now who made 247% just saying, you know what? Can I buy a contract that says that Coinbase is likely to fall? They bought that contract. They woke up today. Boom, up 247%. Somebody else, 230%. Somebody else, 209%. Somebody else down here, down here, you see it? 258% up just from the stock falling. How much? About 9%, family, about 9%. They were able to make that because of the contract. And I want to, again, teach you how to do that. But remember, you got to understand it thoroughly. And it's best to watch somebody who actually doing it on a live stream because then you can see it in real time. So now, Let's go and let's do this. Coinbase is down 51% on the year. Remember, on the stock market, the average return is about 10% up every year, give or take. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. But 50% is abnormal. So if I was going to try to make money with Coinbase, and let's say that I didn't even know how to trade options at all, so let's rewind. What if I wanted to just get the stock? Let's start from the most extreme. If it was $32, I would say, okay, I'm going to buy it at 32 and I'm not telling you to buy, hold, or sell. Remember that. I want you to be the judge. 
but I would put a stop loss, AKA I would sell it and put a sell order if it dropped down to 28. But I would be looking to get in at 32 and ride the wave back up to 50, right? Because this is where, notice it was coming down, 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 down. It bounced off of this level about 30, 32, and went right back up to about even 60 and 50. So then I would try to ride that wave again. But just in case it didn't happen, I would put a stop loss to protect myself at 28. So now, let's say I wanted to play it more risky and more recent instead of waiting and being patient like I would be if I tried to get it at 32. Let's say I waited for it to go to 45, which would be another level of support. If I got it at 45 and I was willing to play a little more risky, I would put my stop loss at 42. I would jump in at 45, stop loss at 42 if I wanted to play it more risky and try to ride it back up to 50. So I would get in, get up, and then get out. Now, we got to talk about Bitcoin because Bitcoin is almost at the center of all of this stuff with Binance and at the center of this stuff with Coinbase being the largest cryptocurrency on this green earth. It's currently $27,000. It's down 2% on a week. It's basically down 13% in the last year, and it's up 5% today. On the same day that Binance is getting sued by the SEC, on the same day that Coinbase is getting sued by the SEC. That's odd, isn't it? Family crypto got a way of correcting itself. It's extremely volatile. So what I do is I buy crypto and I hold it long term. This is my crypto position on Bitcoin. I have it off exchange because a lot of these exchanges, they go belly up and they're gone and your crypto is gone forever. So I have it on a hard storage wallet. I have mine on Ledger. Some people say you, you could do even better than Ledger. So you do the research on that. Now, I got $54,000 in Bitcoin. I basically have two whole Bitcoin. It's down $115 today, but I'm willing to hold this for a decade or more, right? But there is something going on in the background with the government that's looking kind of funny in the light. Now, what is that? According to The Hill, Congress is about to green light CBDC. So Congress, these are the people who basically get to write the laws and vote on the laws, right? And they say they're going to green light CBDC. So now you say, Keenan. Well, what is CBDC, right? You know, we keep it real. We keep it raw. It's this. It's central bank digital currency. Central bank digital currency. Now, central bank digital currency, this means that the government will have control of cryptocurrency by giving you their own cryptocurrency. And now Congress is looking at two bills related to CBDC. It's a little bit of a tongue twister from the family, but you know, we keep it real. We keep it raw. But now... They're saying that there are two bills that are anti-CBDC. Let's go through them really quickly and just get an overview so we can understand what's going on and why the SEC. You let me know in the comments. Do you think the SEC and, again, the Alphabet Boys are going after Binance and Coinbase at the same time by coincidence? Or do you think it has something to do with who knows? So let's go. The first thing, the first bill, it says one will prevent central bank digital currency being a surveillance token and replacing the United States dollar, AKA, you know how you swipe your credit card, you swipe your debit card and you get a whole statement of everything you did. You spent money here, you spent money there. Oh yeah, you was on Amazon loading your card up. You did, you went to the grocery store, you went to the gas station, you got a whole statement of everything. Well, technically your bank is doing surveillance on you because they are kind of helping you with these purchases. They're the middleman to get your money from you to whatever merchant or whatever service or whatever product. Well. Instead of the bank, it would be, oh, the central bank. Actually, yeah, a bank, <laughs> the central bank. But the government, family, instead of a normal bank that we usually use, let's say Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whatever you use, JP Morgan, it would be more so of the government and kind of kick them out of the way. Now, with that being said, they're saying this. It allows the government to track and control your purchases, which that sounds right up their alley, like something that they would want to do and why they might want to go after Binance, why they might want to go after Bitcoin and Coinbase. So let's look at this. The government already controls people's purchases, but it controls those who they feel they have power over, like those who are currently using SNAP, EBT, food stamps. And it says, why doesn't every grocery store accept SNAP, EBT, and food stamps? Well, guess what? How do they control you with these things? They keep you away from areas that they don't want you to be. You go to a certain store, no, we don't accept food stamps here. Got to go somewhere else. And now you're in certain areas that do accept it. And it keeps you away from people that don't want to see you, the powers that be. So now let's go in here and let's look. I learned some things today, even looking through this and doing the research. It says excluded in SNAP benefits, 
beer, wine, and liquor. Okay, that kind of makes sense, right? Cigarettes, yeah, I could get, I could see that. But then I seen foods that are hot at the point of sale. You can't buy that, which is food stamps, your your EBT, your SNAP benefits, any of that. You can't buy it. You can't buy these things according to the USDA right here at the time of this recording. You can't buy vitamins. It's saying that's that's interesting, right? But they get to control what you're doing. So. What this makes me think, and again, you be the judge, you come to your own conclusions, but it makes me think, hmm, remember how the world shut down and they needed to control us a little bit? What if we had central bank digital currency and they turned off your ability to go and buy gas, your ability, they say, hey, listen, we shut off the currency, we shut off the cars of everything. You can't use central bank digital currency after 7 p.m. You gotta be in a the house. They put a, a mandated time frame that you got to stay home up oh, you got a curfew can't come out you can't go to the gas station past six past seven you can't go to the grocery store past this time we want you to stay in the house right that's that's interesting but they would be able to do it easily by having control and an on off switch with all of the currencies so now it wouldn't just be certain things that they wanted you to watch it would be the ability to track you and turn it off if they wanted to so now the other thing the other bill that congress is looking at is potentially going to be greenlit and that's them having a government chosen contractor so they're not the ones distributing the currency it's another party who they get to choose aka they working for the government aka they might as well be the government so with all of this being said we want to always look at how we can make money here so let's go and let's look back at bitcoin bitcoin if it comes down to twenty five thousand and breaks under it oh then i'm looking for it to go to about twenty one thousand. i wouldn't buy it under 25 I might buy it at 21. I want to see if it will hold there. But above 30, this would signal that we are back out of the crypto winter and into a crypto bull market. I'm talking about 32,000. If you see that on Bitcoin, then it's likely to start pumping up and taking us right back to the promised land. Join the Discord if you want to be a part of KG's University for the Gifted. I'll see you in the next one and take care.